Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Mars 3. For those who've been following along with this channel, um, we generally keep our channel in a more jewelry manufacturing context. In this review, I'm not going to just be covering jewelry, but also this printer's capability as a whole, so with sculpture and other kind of manufactured parts. Full disclaimer that this video is entirely our own. Elgu has had no say. Um, we purchased this machine with our own funds. Nothing has been sent to us for free whatsoever. However, we do have an affiliate program down below, but as of the last like 50 days or something, that program has been shut down, so I doubt we'll make anything off of that. But just in case it does go back live and you want to purchase yourself this printer, uh, using that link would be very helpful to us. So when I got this machine, I will admit that my expectations for it were very low. Um, because our daily driver machine is the Prusa SL1S, this machine is kind of a step down uh, in a lot of ways. I understand that the vast majority of our viewers have never really had the opportunity to use a mid-tier or high-end type printer for any significant amount of time. So I understand fully when some of the issues that I have with this machine aren't fully sympathized with or at all because they're kind of more considered creature comforts than necessities. But when you live with those comforts for so long, they really do start to add up and help with the entire workflow. So I'm doing my absolute best to step away from that bias and review this for what it is. So let's talk about the specs of the Mars 3. Um, so what are, what are the biggest upgrades that this has between the Mars 2 Pro is a step up to the 4K monochrome screen, uh, up from a 2K. This supposedly offers, as advertised by Elgu, a 30% increase in print quality compared to the previous model. The build plate on this machine is a very modest uh, 90 mil by 143 mil uh, size, which is approximately three and a half inches by 5.6 inches and features a very rough sandblasted finish. I can safely say as someone who's been using a sandblasted build plate on our other daily driver printer for quite a number of years, this is an absolute best case scenario. This is the best upgrade of this machine probably as compared to others. The build plate adhesion, phenomenally good. It's like chipping off ice in some cases because it's stuck so well. The resin vat used in this machine is very solidly constructed. Uh, I think it's all metal, probably all aluminum. Um, one of the biggest features of it that Elgo advertises is the FEP sheet. They're calling it FEP 2.0, um, but I'm pretty sure it might also be known as NFEP, which has been used on other machines, uh, other brands. And it is really good for high clarity, toughness, and it doesn't have a very good adherence to printed models, the printed resin. So you won't hear that, that, that pop when it peels off the FEP. So this machine also features a COB UV LED light source, which I believe was still available on the 2 Pro. However, they do have now copper heat sinks on it, so it's going to remove that uh, massive heat generated by that UV LED much better. Now, the website does claim silent operation, um, but this machine screams by comparison to some of our other printers, so like, I don't really see that claim as being valid. Uh, as soon as you turn it on, the fan is on full bore all the time, whether it's printing or not, and it's not exactly quiet. This might not be an issue for some, depending on where you're printing, but it was something of note. Exposure times are pretty much exactly as advertised between the one and a half and three second mark, depending on your resin, of course, and that seems to be holding up with all of our test resins as well. The total Z-axis build volume of this printer is 175 millimeters, or 6.8 inches, and features a single linear rail, which as far as I can tell, it doesn't have any wobble or shake or anything like that so far. It does appear that Elgu has removed the activated carbon charcoal filter that was featured in the 2 Pro, um, or at least they're not advertising it as part of the Mars. Uh, I'm inclined to believe that they've removed it because I do have quite a bit of resin smell 
in the studio space without having any kind of filter whatsoever. Now, of course, the hood itself does contain a significant amount of that smell on its own, but still, it's something worth noting. So that's the specs all out of the way. What were my experiences so far with this machine? Well, it was full of ups and downs, let's put it that way. When it arrived in its box, um, I'm really happy to say that it showed up in one piece. Everything was packaged extremely well, uh, very tastefully. The unboxing experience was quite nice. We did live stream that, by the way, so if you want to go see that, uh, head on over to that video. However, as nice as it was, uh, the shipping did take a very long time. Um, Elgu promised that it would be shipping or getting to us by the end of August, and it didn't arrive to us until the end of September, so it was a full month late. Hopefully that has been dealt with, and if you were to order one of these machines when they come back in stock, um, you won't have to wait a month. During the initial print setup process, um, I gotta say I was a little bit underwhelmed. I'm used to going through like setup wizards where the machine calibrates itself and makes sure that it's functioning well. This one, you turn it on and you hit one button and um, the button didn't really match up with the manual picture. The picture wasn't particularly well described. I didn't really know what I was doing. The, the manual that came with it was not even very well translated, I must say. Um, but I mean, I did get through it and once it was done, this printer was ready to go. I did notice though, while I was playing around with the, um, the Z axis, trying to find the home situation for this machine, that uh, this machine is capable of destroying itself. Um, you can hit the up button on the menu so many times that the Z axis just keeps rising up and it can push past the cheap um, plastic cap that's kind of screwed on the top and it will just break itself. It doesn't have a sensor to say, stop, I can't go any higher. And I found that to be kind of shocking. So when it came to getting this printer ready to print, um, we had to go through Chitu Box, Chitu Box, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that, I must admit, was probably my least favorable slicing experience that I've ever had in my entire life. Um, that program does not run very well on Macs. Um, there is no uh, pro version of Chitu Box. Uh, this machine, as a pre-order, came with a free one-year pro, but I, they don't even have a Mac version available, so I can't try it. Um, it crashed numerous times. The supports were, they seemed rather unintelligent, like they weren't very well placed, or particularly well, like they were just doing like single rods. They weren't building towers or trying to, you know, attach to anything really. Um, so that was really not a great experience. I ended up moving away from Shadow Box to do the supports in Prusa Slicer. Then I exported it as an STL file uh, with supports attached and brought that into Shadow Box. And then I worried about print settings. Now I know this is not a unique experience. Um, quite a few other YouTubers have had this same situation. Um, paying for Shadow Box Pro seems like a really kind of gut punch move by this company, especially when they're locking down certain machines to use that software. Um, I, I just can't get behind that at all. I, I will not be using Chidu Box as much as I possibly can in the near future. However, when it came to uploading the um, printer pro, the resin profiles into Chitu Box, I did enjoy that. Uh, finding, I believe it's a .ctb file, um, that was really quite nice actually being able to go through just upload it and rather than going through each and every parameter uh, line by line you know how fast it lifts how far it lifts all that other stuff um it was really nice to be able to just kind of drag and drop and it was done i think that's one of the best things about these machines because there are because they're priced so competitively there are so many more of them out in the wild so Exchanging really useful, very well calibrated um, resin profiles is easy. Uh, a lot of the, or most of the resin companies that we've dealt with at the very least have an Elgu uh, printer profile available for their resins. So it's really easy to just get started with what you're trying to make. So in summary, I do believe that this machine was worth every penny that we paid. The print quality that it produces is truly exceptional. I would strongly recommend this machine for hobbyists, beginners, and virt in virtually every field. 
And if you're a business and you're thinking about entering this space, but you don't necessarily want to commit to a very high tier machine, this is definitely a nice way to enter the space. So for the time being, you'll probably see this settings and opinions listed on our resin ranked list on our website. If you haven't seen that, by the way, it's been revamped. So it's going through the same link every time, which would be much more nice than going through the blog. Um, check that out if you haven't already, because it has a lot of very useful information about castable resins. If you're feeling particularly generous and you might need a t-shirt or something, uh, check out our merch bar. We have a ton of different shirts and stuff that we've designed ourselves, and we're going to be adding more as the time goes by. And if you also need help with printing with these machines or casting or jewelry in general, um, feel free to hit us up in the comments or join our membership program where I can help you on a much more one-on-one -on -one basis. So I will see you guys in the next video.